In Major League Baseball, there are only 44 position players ever that made their big league debut in the modern era to earn at least 75 career war. Of those 44, only 7 are not in the Hall of Fame. One of those seven is Adrian Beltre, who will certainly be elected in later this month. Two more are Albert Pujols and Mike Trout, both not eligible yet, but undoubtedly will be first ballot electees. Three others are Barry Bonds, Alex Rodriguez, and Pete Rose. Two players connected to PEDs and one who was banned from Cooperstown. That leaves just one player left and that player is Lou Whitaker. To put in perspective just how much 75 war is, here is a short list of players elected into the Hall of Fame that have less than 75. Derek Jeter, Tony Gwynn, Reggie Jackson, Frank Thomas, Jim Tomei, Larry Walker, Barry Larkin, Ivan Rodriguez, Tim Raines, Eddie Murray, Mike Piazza, Ernie Banks, I've made my point. But just for fun, here is the full list. Look, I understand war is not everything and shouldn't be the only stat to base someone for Hall of Fame consideration. However, I would be lying if I said Lou Whitaker did not belong in the Hall of Fame. He was one of the greatest players of all time and may very well be the most egregious case for someone to have not been voted in. Who is this player? Why should he be in the Hall of Fame? And why has he not been elected in yet? Lou Whitaker was the second baseman who played in Major League Baseball for 19 seasons from 1977 to 1995. A near two decade long career in baseball, all 19 seasons came as a member of the Detroit Tigers. In his career, Whitaker played in nearly 2400 games and came to the plate nearly 10,000 times. He slashed 276 with a 363 on base and 426 slugging for a 789 OPS and 117 adjusted OPS. He has nearly 2,400 hits, which includes over 700 extra base hits, over 1,000 RBIs, nearly 1,400 runs, over 3,600 total bases, and earned 75.1 war. He's a 5-time All-Star, 4-time Silver Slugger Award winner, 3-time Gold Glove winner, and was a Rookie of the Year Award winner, taking home the award in 1978. Something I admire about Whitaker's stats is his walk to strikeout ratio, as he walked more often than he struck out. Many of his stats sound amazing, but how does he compare to players during his career as well as all time? From 1977 to 1995, Whitaker ranks inside the top 20 in RBIs, inside the top 15 in hits, extra base hits, and total bases, and inside the top 10 in runs and war. There were 38 players that have at least 7,500 play appearances during that time frame and he ranks 25th in OPS and 26th in adjusted OPS. Those last two rankings may sound low, but what about comparing him to other players at his position? When looking at all second basemen from 1977 to 1995, Whitaker ranks first in practically everything. Seriously, he's first in hits, extra base hits, runs, RBIs, total bases, and war. Finding many second basemen with a large number of play appearances to compare other stats proves to be a challenge, so we need to drastically lower the threshold. Among 39 second basemen from that time frame that have at least 3,000 play appearances, or less than a third of Whitaker's career total, he ranks 4th in OPS and 5th in adjusted OPS. If we were to increase the minimum threshold to 5,000 play appearances, Whitaker ranks second out of 18 second basemen in OPS and adjusted OPS, just barely behind Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg. Whitaker was also a terrific fielder, having the 15th most D-War among all players during his career, and having the third highest mark among second basemen. While he was a big threat during his playing days, how well does he hold up against players all time? Among all players throughout MLB history, Whitaker ranks inside the top 230 in RBIs, top 175 in extra base hits, top 150 in hits and total bases, top 100 in runs, and among position players, top 55 in war. Among 363 players with at least 7,500 play appearances, Whitaker is 213th in OPS and 196th in adjusted OPS. Decent rankings compared to everyone, what about looking at just second baseman again? Among all second basemen, he ranks inside the top 15 in hits, 
RBIs and total bases, and inside the top 10 in extra base hits, runs, and war. Out of 35 second basemen with at least 7,500 play appearances, Whitaker ranks 16th in OPS and 10th in adjusted OPS. To look at defense again, he ranks inside the top 100 among all players in D-War and inside the top 12 among second basemen. To summarize everything, during his career, Whitaker was arguably the best second baseman of his era, being number one in most of the major counting stats. When looking at all players throughout MLB history, he's around the top 200 in many notable categories, including a highly impressive ranking in war. For second baseman, he's undoubtedly a top 10 player at that position. The best when he was active, and one of the best all time. There are several second basemen in the Hall of Fame we can compare Whitaker to, but I believe the best one would be Ryan Sandberg. Sandberg, one of the greatest second basemen of all time, has a very similar career to Whitaker, except there's a strong argument that Whitaker was even better. Whitaker has the higher war and adjusted OPS mark of the two. Sandberg beats him in hits, home runs, and OPS, but only by a small margin. I also looked up other stats not shown on the table, like extra base hits and runs, and both had very similar values that only differed by a slight amount. Sandberg does have 200 more stolen bases, but Whitaker clears him in D-War, and would have one of the highest marks among Hall of Famers at second. The only other advantage Sandberg has is accomplishing his counting stats in less playing time, having about 700 fewer play appearances, or roughly one full season. However, are we really going to say that had Sandberg played one more year, he would have been significantly better than Lou Whitaker? These two were the best second basemen of the 1980s and early 90s, and yet, one has been elected in, while the other one was dropped off his first ballot. One last minor thing I want to mention that helped solidify his case was his ability to stay relevant as he got older. In his 20s, Whitaker posted a 110 adjusted OPS and 39.2 war. In his 30s, Whitaker posted a 125 adjusted OPS and 34.8 war. Given how immensely talented he was, why hasn't Lou Whitaker been elected into Cooperstown yet? To put it simply, he had what I call a quote-unquote boring career. He never stood out in any category or had an elite season. For someone that played for 19 seasons, Whitaker led the league in one category, one time, and that was games played. To add insult to injury, that year where he led in games played came in the strike short 1981 season, where not every team played the same amount of games. In the American League, teams played from a range of 103 games to 110. The Tigers' 109 games were more than several other clubs, so Whitaker's feet that season more so came down to dumb luck. He never hit 30 home runs in a season, never stole more than 20 bases, never had a 900 or higher OPS, and only has one qualified season with a 300 batting average. Consistently solid, but never one of the best in the league. Although, that would be an extremely poor excuse for arguing against his Hall of Fame case. When Whitaker first appeared on the ballot, he received less than 3% of the vote and fell off that initial year. He most recently appeared on the Veterans Committee ballot for the 2020 induction, but received only 6 votes, half of the minimum 12 needed. He'll be eligible again for election in two years for the 2026 Contemporary Baseball ballot, and hopefully then, he'll be voted in. Something that really should have happened 20 years ago, 